Okay, so you guys really liked the office video. I'm gonna explain a little bit more about why I completely switched to R from using Microsoft Excel. The reason for that being that I took a data scientist course, like an online course, in Coursera a few years back, which actually helped me get a job. And I learned the programming language R in that course for no particular reason. I just saw an ad for it and then I asked a friend, hey, uh, what do you think about R? Is that a good programming language? And he said, well, it's very elegant and you can do stuff like with a one-liner and it's, it's really neat. And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I'm just gonna do this course because Maybe it'll help me find a job or, you know, data science is interesting right now. It's such an overused term, but at its core, it's really a cool thing, you know, especially if you come from some other STEM field like me, I studied physics. So after finishing my degree, I worked in the industry a bit and then I also stayed at home for a while and I was just interested in working on some new fancy stuff, to be frank. <laughs> I just wanted to work with a new programming language, to be honest. Like I already knew C and some other programming languages like MATLAB and stuff you never use for anything. And so I wanted to learn something new. Before that, I had looked into Python and Python to me seemed just a little bit slow and didn't strike me as a very elegant and quick language. I'm not bashing Python, although <laughs> I'm bashing Python all the time, basically. But that is just, you know, coming from C, you sometimes have this feeling of, why would I do something that takes more than a millisecond, you know, just because I can. Like, I would always do the fastest solution, even if it's so much code and results in an executable. <laughs> because especially in the beginning, I just fundamentally rejected the idea of having a script that you need to run rather than a binary file. Like, why? It's so slow. But now that I have worked with a lot of different programming languages, I must say that everything just has its application. And a lot of these interesting script languages, they are just accessible to more people. Especially Python is such an interesting language because it's accessible basically to people with no mathematical background. And you might say, well, that just means it's accessible to stupid people. No, not stupid people. People who want to loop over anything. There's a good reason to do that. You can't do that in R, by the way. I mean, you can if you loop along, but you can't do it natively. And that is so cool about Python. That is like my favorite thing about Python, that and how you use regular expressions in it, which you can also do in R, but just the elegance about it in Python, oh, mwah, I like it. So I don't hate Python. Just don't, just stop, okay? I don't hate Python, I just like R better for the purposes I use it for because I think it's more elegant and simpler and cleaner. Yes, that makes it more easy, as it should. So the reason why I switched to R was this class and basically then I worked with R for a while in my job and I coerced everyone into becoming an R user, even some Python users. And I was like, just do this in R, I will show you. And yeah, um, that was cool. And after that, I also had another tech job in R&D and there again, I said, let's do it all in R and not because everything is a nail if you only have a hammer, but because it was an awesome tool for the job. Anyway, so that was my R story, how I got into it. And yes, there was absolutely no reason for me to pick that language. It was totally random and it was one of the best decisions ever because since I did that, I have used R so, so many times in my private life, even to just analyze statistics from Instagram at some point. Like I went on Instagram and just accessed their database or accessed the output of their database on their website. And then I analyzed, you know, how my posts were performing, analyzed certain hashtags back when that was a thing, just because I like to look into things and I really like web scraping. Web scraping is also a little bit easier in Python, but I still do that in R because all the other tools that I will then apply to the data I harvested from the internet are just so much more elegant that's why 
I do web scraping, even though it is slightly more complicated than in Python. So I did a lot of that on my own time, certain analysis tools, a lot of mathematics. I just love mathematics as my second favorite thing right after optical field theory. So which is my main expertise. <laughs> and no, I'm not into loop quantum gravity. Also not string theory. And so you see at some point I really use a lot of R in my daily life. Whenever I have a mathematical problem, I just use it like a calculator, but for more complicated stuff. And when I want to see correlations or with uh, you know, the whole 2020 thing going down, yeah, I, I used a lot of R to analyze that data. Oh, this data was so good. Like, um, <laughs> by the way, I had the play three times. Dude, I don't know. But that was a very interesting data set. I worked with data from Sweden. I worked with data from Germany. Very cool. And R was perfect for that. Actually, they had an R dashboard um, where you could track the occurring cases. So yeah, people use R for these kind of applications. Actually, the GUI things that you can do in R are so neat. The only thing you have to do is to know how to code and not just copy snippets from the internet and make it bulky and slow, because that can happen. But if you know what you're doing, you can do it fast, I promise. And so at some point I was just not using any Excel or Google Sheets stuff anymore. I just had no need for it. And if you are a beginner and you are thinking like, but this is so uncomfortable. You know, how do you deal with copying, pasting? How do you access cells? How do you edit stuff? That is just not stuff you do with raw data, usually. Because first you collect the data in a meaningful way so that it has a useful header and everything and you know what you're looking for. Therefore, you know what kind of table to create. If your data in the first place is not formatted in that way, your data acquisition process is faulty. And you should not be asking, oh, why is this software not making my life easier? You should be asking, why am I not able to collect data in a nice way? Because that is your problem and not the thing you clean it up with. The less data cleaning you have to do, the better your acquisition is. And the better your acquisition is, the better for every, everyone involved, because usually you start from your raw data, right? So your raw data needs to be as clean as possible in the first place and it should be ready to be expanded at some point in time which is often a problem with databases by the way and the way people set up databases and personally i've worked with a lot of this stuff and i can just say that if you have non-scientists set up a scientific database and name entries <sighs> oh boy okay so now if your data is clean then you have a good starting point to work with it in any kind of software. It doesn't have to be RStudio or Excel. It can be anything. But the thing is that if you use a non-graphical interface or a low graphics interface like RStudio, you will run into problems earlier than with something like Excel. It doesn't mean you don't have problems. You just don't notice them. But your data essentially is formatted in a flawed way or collected in a flawed way if you are having problems in an IDE just like RStudio or in the TTY using R. Stuff like, oh, I cannot address the cells correctly or I cannot copy something from here to there or classes are mixed, like you have numbers and letters and everything and it's just messy. That stuff you feel like in Excel, you can just edit it and change it and then it's no longer a problem. When the real problem is that you made it that way and you shouldn't. So I want to shift the discussion away from this, oh, but I can easily correct my mistakes in Excel to if you have a nice set of raw data, then we don't need to talk about this. We only need to talk about what to do with that data. This part, the cleaning and the formatting it shouldn't be an issue. Only what you do with it. Calculations, analysis, correlation, changing one type of data set into another. You know, if you want to get a vector out of your data frame, that is something we can talk about. But not, oh, but I want to edit this cell because I missed a zero there or this is a character and should be a number. No, no, this is 
that's not part of the discussion. So you have to get over that by understanding that if you make a mistake collecting the data, that's not a matter of the platform you use. That is a matter of you being sloppy. And then the next step is you think about what you want to do with the data. So for me, regression models at some point were really interesting and the way R handles regression models is just really neat. But you also have to know some math and you have to understand how a regression model works. So when people just draw a trend line in Excel, they do not understand the math. Therefore, they don't need a lot of control over the math. And they feel like, oh, the software is doing it for me. Nice. I like this. I want it like this. I just want to see the equation in the end and when I have it and then I have the slope and the offset then I'm fine with your linear regression. And to me that is like well you have zero information here. You have two numbers that don't tell you a lot of things about this data whereas a table that is only consistent of text and the output from some least square approximation algorithm tells me more than you will ever read about your data. Maybe you don't need it or you think you don't need it, but I act upon the social imperative, which is you should always behave in a way that you get more options. More options, especially in programming, are always better. So I don't want a software that limits me. This limits me to just have two numbers and not see any other part of the model of the calculation, how well it converged. That does not help me in my data analysis. So that is what separates a normal user from a data scientist, I guess. And really, I, I do hate this term. I don't know, I don't have a better word. But person who works with data, data person. Oh yeah, let's just use that. So as a data person, <laughs> so as a data person, you get picky and you want more from your data. You want to know everything and you want to do a lot of stuff with it that the average user doesn't want to do. Now, why do I still use R in my personal life if I could just use a little table. Why do I never use a table? Well, first of all, complacency. I'm used to it. I'm not used to clicking and filling out cells because I am a hardcore terminal user. I am not interested in clicking. Clicking makes my hands hurt. I am interested. In, by the way, I did my nails for you guys. Clicking hurts my brain, my hands and my morals. So no, less clicking, better. And that is just something you might acquire in your evolution to becoming a weird nerd. You might experience that at some point. You just think it's cool to never use the mouse because that's for normies, right? So yeah, but it's not like I didn't get over that phase. I use my mouse sometimes, but it's just more comfortable for me to have my hands in one place and not do a lot of clicking because then it's faster. It's just more efficient. And once you are used to that, you don't want to go back. And then just one leads to the other and eventually you find yourself doing mass block operations with large data sets. It depends on what kind of data set you have. You know, I personally just don't know what the average user does with Excel. Do you do your taxes? I don't know. Maybe for that is good. But for me, I do mathematical calculations. And I understand that if you don't do that, you probably don't need it if you don't want to do a lot of mathematics applied to a lot of numbers. I also like plotting stuff in a scientific way. I just personally don't like the output that Microsoft Excel generates. It looks unprofessional. As in, it's weirdly pretty and misses a lot of the information that you need and it's just polished in the wrong spots. Now, do I recommend R to users who are not interested in becoming programmers or analysts of any kind? No, no, I don't. But maybe you can look into an open source alternative because I think the stuff that Excel does is not really things that you can do open source. Right now, if you're handling large sets of data, whatever that might be, I can't imagine anything like a standard user needs to collect data on, you know, cause, cause I do web scraping. I, I hack stuff. I collect data just for the fun of it. Okay. Ethically, of course. So I have large data sets that I play with. I have no idea what are, what you are doing on your computer with a lot of data. Like, what are you collecting? But please just let me know in the comments. Cause I have no clue. If you don't have to do 
a lot of math with a lot of data, then there is no need to use advanced software or even a programming language to achieve your result. It is probably faster in Excel or Google Sheets or LibreOffice. You use that, you be happy. Nobody is criticizing you for not doing that. I just wanted to tell you that there is an option. I also think that learning a programming language is a good skill and R is probably one of the easiest programming languages that you can learn. It's literally suitable for kids. It's so easy. You can learn a lot of programming basics just from using that language. And I think that is a really good step stone to getting into programming and finding joy in something abstract and in mathematics. Maybe you didn't like math in school or in university it was difficult for you, or you just think that you have no application for it. You know, I have automated stuff using programming languages that I never thought I would. I used it to analyze medical data. I used it to analyze, you know, the events of 2020. I use it for web scraping and these are my hobbies, but I also use it for simple calculations and really small data sets just because it has become so comfortable for me. So in the end, it's just a tool. It doesn't mean that you're awesome or a great programmer if you use this or that language. Use what you like. All I'm saying, you should give it a try. If you're thinking about it, if you're thinking, maybe I can do this more elegantly than what I'm doing right now. I am convinced that you can actually. I am convinced that R in the long run is easier, more elegant and just the way that you store data and output and how you handle it, it's just so much more neat than anything you can do in Excel. So I just want you to think about it and if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. I will try to help you out. I get a lot of comments these days and I'm really grateful for that. If I don't answer your comment, it means that I didn't have time to sit down and really think about it because I wanted to give you a meaningful answer. So. Please don't be mad if I don't answer right away or not at all. And thanks for watching. That's it.